from subcompacts to full sizers, there's a crossover to suit every space requirement. Or is there? Because here we have the second generation Jeep Compass, which splits the narrow gap between subcompact and compact crossovers. But given America's already bloated SUV market, where exactly does the Compass fit in? So as the middle child between the Renegade and Cherokee, the Compass's road manners are middling. The suspension has a difficult time soaking up small road imperfections like sharp ruts and potholes. The large bumps are gobbled up with relative ease. Then again, that firmness at the top of the suspension stroke gives the Compass a light, lively character in corners. Straight line performance is far less impressive. I don't want to say it's slow. Alright, I, I guess I do want to say it's slow because I don't have a better word for it. You'd think a 2.4 liter four cylinder cranking at 180 horsepower and 175 pound feet of torque would be sufficient in a vehicle of this size, but it's not. Merging is difficult, passing is frustrating, and yet the Compass returns roughly the same fuel economy as faster, dimensionally large arrivals like these guys. Direct some blame to a curb weight that can top 3,600 pounds in the four wheel drive Compass Trailhawk. Sluggish acceleration aside, it seems Jeep has finally sorted out its 9-speed automatic. Gear changes are generally smooth, the shift logic is proactive and predictable. Or you can just skip all that and get the 6-speed manual. Where automatic transmissions are concerned, front drive models utilize the 6-speed, while all-wheel drive versions feature the 9-speed. Take note that towing is not recommended with front-wheel drive. Choose all-wheel drive, and you're cleared to lug 2,000 pounds worth of trailer. At speed, the steering is just plain great. It's light yet progressive enough so as to not feel overly artificial, while road and wind noise could be a lot better. Aside from overly sensitive brakes, the Compass is a joy to drive around town, thanks to a tight turning radius and excellent outward visibility. Before leaving the city, we should mention the automatic engine stop-start system that comes standard with either automatic transmission. In practice, we found its operation intrusive, so we appreciate that Jeep, unlike some manufacturers, kindly included an off button. So it may not be a master of asphalt, but it wears a Jeep badge. So let's see how it does. Yeah. Even without the Trailhawk's more sophisticated four-wheel drive system, higher ground clearance and all-terrain tires, we found that every Compass 4x4 is an adept off-roader. In slick, low-speed situations, the traction management system works as intended. And through flowing, twisty trails, the Compass is down for some fun running. Best of all, following a thorough thrashing, the interior panels are squeak-free and the alignment hasn't changed a bit. If you do have a hankering for serious off-road adventure, the Trailhawk, with its 20 to 1 crawl ratio, 5-mode terrain management system, skid plates, 8.5 inches of ground clearance, and naturally rugged style is the compass of choice. Whether you prefer on-road or off, every moment driving the compass will be spent here. An interior crafted with loads of soft-touch materials, comfy touch points, and especially comfortable seats featuring my personal favorite, Four-way lumbar support. Oh uh -huh, yeah. Out back, Micah is complaining that the seat backs are too upright. The seat backs are too upright. But besides that, there's plenty of room around his knees and whiny head. Seat backs are too upright. Oh yeah, I guess they are too upright. Further rearward hides a 27.2 cubic foot cargo area. That's small versus proper compact SUVs, but good compared to subcompacts. Either way, this is a decent spot to pack your gear. Among the standard features found on the roughly $22,000 base trim are air conditioning, a manual transmission, push button start but not passive entry, and seven airbags. Value priced compasses also offer Bluetooth, a backup camera, multiple USB ports, and a five, or in this case, seven inch touchscreen infotainment center. The layout is clean and simple, plus I'm quite keen on this digital menu bar, but response times are laggy and as you can see, CarPlay and Android Auto interfaces are hilariously small. 
trade up to the 8.4 inch unit though, and you've got yourself a fast, appropriately sized infotainment system. Maybe we've covered all this. Offered on higher trims or the option sheet are leather, a Beats audio system with nine speakers and a subwoofer, dual zone climate control, and modern safety technology like forward collision warning and lane departure warning, but not adaptive cruise control, which is an increasingly common feature among small SUVs. Load up an all-wheel drive Compass Limited, and you can expect an MSRP of around $35,000, eclipsing the price tag of many well-equipped traditional compact SUVs. Given its tweener status, the Compass is either a smaller, cheaper alternative to compacts like the Honda CRV, Chevrolet Equinox, and Nissan Rogue, at least in lower priced Compass trims, or a pricier but roomier alternative to subcompact SUVs like the Honda HRV, Chevy Trax, and Mazda CX-3. Considering price and overall size, the most direct competitor is probably the Nissan Rogue Sport, but yeah, the Jeep Compass is hard to categorize. But you know what? Who cares if it doesn't slot into a traditional segment? Because considering America's insatiable appetite for high-riding vehicles, the tweener-sized compass is going to fit right in. <laughs>